By now, many of you have seen these teacher projector stands. I'm going to show you how I built this one. I've improved the design. You can see how easily it moves up and down. There's, uh, there's no knob to tighten. There's just a wood screw with kind of a cap head on it. This is my first pass, a little rough, the groove is too wide, and this plywood is kind of rough. But just tilt back, move up and down, and you're set. little ledge at the bottom so it doesn't tip forward. I made this out of Aspen. Change the design of the tilt a little bit, I've got two cut off pieces that are joined together and over uh, I guess kind of overhang there's an overhang situation so that you can tilt back and move up and down I think the bevel here is a little more attractive but um, anyways I'm going to show you how I built this one feel free to go at it Teachers need these, it's for a good cause. Let's get started. This is the cut sheet. It's from a four foot long piece of wood. We're going to take the three and a half inch square piece and cut it diagonally for the brace. The most important aspect of this is that your cuts are as square as possible. You don't need fancy tools. You could really, you could do this even with an old circular saw. I'm going to demonstrate how I do it on a table saw, including a sled that I have. But if you look closely at the blade, it's actually a circular saw blade. So I'm putting everything in position for the first cut now. Here we go. I'm using just a carpenter's square to measure the distance for the cuts as I go. but. If you don't have one, you can just use a tape measure and a pencil to mark out where you want your cuts to be. The lengths don't have to be exact. They can be off a little bit and it'll still work fine. So the lengths don't have to be precise. The only thing you really want to be careful with is the three and a half inch square piece because that you're going to want to have equal because it's easier to cut the diamond from a square piece than a rectangle. The wood doesn't even have to be three and a half inches wide. Just anywhere between three and four inches is fine. That was the width that I happened to have on hand. Now I'm setting up to cut the groove. And you can see I'm adjusting the saw blade down. I've taken off the uh, the safety apparatus and the sled and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make three cuts just a tiny bit off center for the first two and then I'm going to split the difference for the final cut which will remove the thin strip that was left over from the first two cuts and here you can see I've already made the first cut I'm making the second cut it's going to leave a thin strip in there. And after this cut's done, uh, that strip, it's just, it's not really going to come out. But I can move the fence inward just a tiny bit. And saw it again, and that'll take care of the middle piece. Now you'll notice the special push block that I'm using, and this is really important when you don't have the safety gear on because you don't see it in this video, but this piece of Aspen, it completely bound up after I cut it. I, I edited that part out, but without the riving knife, yeah, this would have jammed, especially on a larger blade, and I'm very glad that I have uh, uh, the push block that I do, that micro jig. Uh, because this really did bind. Okay, so the middle part has now been removed and the screw, as you can see, it fits really, really nicely in there. Perfect fit. 
So the wood uh, warped a little bit when I took it off the saw. You can see it's a little bit out of alignment. I, I thought I'd have to put something at the top to uh, line it up, but actually the ledge that the phone goes on keeps everything lined up fine. So here I'm just squaring things up uh, to get it lined up to drive some nails in to hold the braces in place. You don't need a nail gun for this. You could glue these in place. You, know, you could drive screws in. Um, that would work fine. I, I just happen to have a nail or so I'm using it. And um, if you don't have a square, you can just take one of the cutoffs and use that to align things. I'm putting some of the remaining pieces underneath to give a level base to drive the nails into the other brace. Here we go. Here I'm taking the one inch cutoffs and I'm going to nail them together Again, you don't need a nailer for this. It would be just fine to glue them, but I wanted to get it finished, so I'm nailing them together. And this is going to allow me to build that kind of uh, shifted ledge, that overhang design that you saw in the beginning of the video. Now I'm going to drive a screw uh, into the, uh, the piece that holds the phone. I'm pre-drilling a hole first and then we'll attach uh, the ledge. Okay, moment of truth. Here we go. Just lift it up, just move it up and down. I'm going to put some weight on. Oh, that's not a lot of weight. How about my cell phone? When you put it where it's level, it doesn't tip. It's forward a little, but this keeps it straight. When you want to adjust, up and down real easy. You can even turn it sideways. You want the uh, phone to face a different direction. There you go.